Hey, what's up everybody? I thought I'd share something with you, something that I always wanted to see when I was shopping for a new press. So my wife and I, we bought this new Carlson basket press today. I'm not sure the exact model number, but I think it's, uh, I think the Carlson and Associates, they just make one basket press. And so the thing that I was um, having to do last year before we bought this thing, I was having to drive around and see how everybody works this thing and how it kind of, um, how it's all put together and how you take it apart and how you clean it. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, we got a um, little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon that we're going to press off today. I have four bins, and I do the uh, the ton and a half fermenters. So there's um, 3,000 pounds, a ton and a half, that goes into those fermenters. Right over here, I don't know if you can see them if they're on camera, but I got all the free-run juice pressed off of it. And so I'm going to put this guy together. I'm going to load it up and show you how the thing works. Here we go. So this thing here is the best thing ever. You, I didn't think I was going to need it, but I'll show you. It's pretty much just a chute that funnels in uh, all the fruit that is in these bins. I can pick it up with the forklift and swag back, put it right in there, and it works like a champ. Uh, let me go grab the forklift. basket it's pretty heavy <laughs> I don't even think two dudes could pick it up so it says with anything with this um, with all the moving and cleaning stuff that you got to do it's pretty crucial to have a forklift so this thing just kind of slides on here you kind of ease it on it's a feel thing. I can't see anything underneath it. Hey, there we go. So it has a nice kind of polymer kind of gasket, like a huge gasket underneath there that protects it from all the banging around that you could do to it. All right, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. Okay, so now we're gonna piece this thing together. So this thing, this big column right here is pretty heavy, but it, it slides super easy. But first I gotta put this gasket in the bottom here that kind of prevents everything from getting smushed down at the bottom. Okay, so there's two of these, I don't know what you call them, big kind of pads. But you can see this one right here, this goes at the bottom of the basket right here. And this face is at the bottom, so this lets when this thing's just squishing down on top of it, it's shooting a lot of juice through these holes right here, and then it's able to escape to the to the edge of the basket. These things are heavy, so I'm a little winded. <laughs> uh, so what you got to do here is there's a there's a, um, a washer and a pin in here that holds it in place. So you got this guy right here, set that right here, and you got to muscle this thing in here. Get underneath it. Oops. Finesse that in place. <laughs> or just drop it in there. And then you put this pin. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's all put together here. You got this pad sitting at the bottom. These holes will let the juice run through, and they got these little um, kind of paths that'll let the juice escape to the side of the of the basket here. Um, so all that comes out of a little spigot right there, and then if there's any berries that get if there's any berries that get um, outside of the basket there, they'll end up in your strainer right here, and this thing. Uh, just lifts out and then I got to hook up my hose right here and that is what I'll use to fill the barrels. Okay, let's 
get going with that. Put you back over here. Okay, so here we go. So there's a big latch right here. You gotta pop this in and you gotta muscle it up. <laughs> what am I hitting? It's so heavy, you feel like you're running up against something sometimes, so you gotta be careful not to run over a wire, electrical cord or something. Okay, so now you put it into manual mode, press start. You gotta lower the basket down and it's gonna snap in place. It's gonna go right around that edge of that big gasket strainer thing that I just showed you that we just put in there. It's a little tricky, you gotta kinda guide it in. That looks good. Keep lowering down the other side. This thing is super, super strong. But it's not that fast. So you gotta patient with it. Okay, so there's these two hooks I should show you. So what I was doing right there, I was lowering the basket with these, those two hooks. They go on the side of the basket. I'll show you. So these guys right here, they, they snap into place right there. And so when you get it down low enough, I'll flip both of them up, rest them on the, the press right here, and then you gotta pull them back up. Here they go. Okay. So now, bring you back over here. So now what we're going to do is we're done kind of moving stuff and lifting stuff. So I just got to slide this thing back because now we're going to put the auger in place. And we're going to go swag. We're going to put the fruit in there. The press. So here we go. So it glides. It's super easy. Super heavy. But how they, however they put this thing together, man, it is so well balanced. It just really glides nicely. Okay, so now we put the chute in, the hopper, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you get this guy in place. Just kind of eyeball it, center it up. And you lock it in place. And you use these, these casters on this hopper and the brakes are great. The wheels are really grippy. Once you lock this thing in place, man, it's not going anywhere. Make sure you got a good angle to see the dump. So I got this press this year, and one of the, I guess you could call it one of the most exciting things or nerve wracking things or pucker factor things of this press is this part right here. So you gotta, it's kinda like a feel thing where you gotta get, I, I had these new bins, I had to get used to these new bins. And um, and then just how to line it up. So kinda how I found what works well for this particular bin is, you know, I eyeball it so the, the end closest to me is just past the hopper. And then you gotta kinda just watch it as you start rotating it. If you don't have a forklift that has a rotator head on it, I don't know how in the world you would do it. I guess there's other hoppers and kind of conveyors that could feed this thing, but. 
So I just kind of, oh, jeez, I was going to say, oh, you just kind of finesse it, and then I just yank it. Oh, shoot. I don't have a, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a hose in there yet. <laughs> got to catch that. Okay, caught it. Caught the juice. I'm going to put a valve on that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, got a little juice. Taste it. It is so cold. It's so cold. It's November 15th. It is, it is 34 degrees out here right now. This is insane. This is the exciting part right here. I always joke, it's like, this is when everything can go wrong. And it is. Just like last night, especially when you leave a valve off. Okay, up we go. So these are the Macro 48S bins. I guess that's the industry standard name for them. Again, they hold a ton and a half of fruit that's picked. I do the ferments inside these bins and we do the punch downs in these things and cover them up, put a little bug screen on them and cover them up. My ferments last about eight, about eight days or so, eight, nine days. But man, this cold weather that we've been having, this thing has been fermenting for like Two weeks, man. It's been wild. Okay, so this is where you gotta pay attention. You don't want it to kind of all glop out at once. I'm just gonna finesse. Ease it in. Steady. So I have one ton of fruit in this particular bin. This basket is rated to hold two and a half ton of pumice must, pumice plus, whatever you call it. Pumice <laughs> must. So this is one of the biggest upgrades for me was the capacity. Before we, we, we had a, a little tiny press, that's what we got started with. It was great. It was the it was from Carlson and Associates, the Puleo SF8. So after this, I'm just getting seeds and stuff. I don't want that in there anyway. Get those seeds get to squish and push a mere tannin in there. This little piggy right here, so we can wash it here in just a second. And we'll get bin number two. So this is going to be two ton total of magic that will go into here.
Nope, nope, nope. I'm gonna overfill it a little bit, so I gotta push it around. That's one thing is that once this thing gets going and it gets pretty full. I gotta work with a with a like a little paddle here to scoot stuff around so you can fit everything. Another thing is while you're filling, keep an eye on your sump bin down there. You may have to run over to the pump, especially with these ridiculously large loads. Make sure you don't overflow. I'm not sure of the capacity of the tray down there that's catching the juice right down here. Uh, it feels like it's about just from pumping and kind of getting the fuel for it this season, feels like it's about maybe 30, 40 gallons it'll hold down here. I'll bring the camera over so you can see it. Right, how much more do we got? Oh, we just got like a lot of seeds and stuff. We can fit that. We're gonna fit that. It's all seeds. You get all the skin. All you do is you remove your chute. She rolls back. This thing rolls pretty easily. Come on. Now, if you look at this thing, I wish you could smell it. it smells spectacular. That's what two ton, like 2.2 ton of fruit that I picked fills this thing up almost all the way. Uh, and the guy that we purchased this from, Casey, over at Carlson, he says that uh, kind of recommend fill height is like right here on it. I'm a little heavy on it because I don't, if I were to split this into two different presses, it um, like it doesn't get it as good of a press as if it's more full like this. Let me give you a little look-see here. What we got going here. Okay. Now Ooh. There we go. Okay, that's set. Okay, so now we put this other pad in place. This just kind of provides an even pressure all the way down. It, it fits into the basket perfectly. And it is heavy. Super heavy. Probably good 45, 50 pounds. It's so big and awkward. All right, I'll let you see how this sits in there. Let's take a look. See how nice, like the, around the edge. It's just perfect. So it's a little cattywampus right now, but once that bad dog starts pushing down, it's gonna even out real quick. Okay, let's put her in place. All right, here we go. So yeah, 
I got a little bit of a slope here on the crush pad so the water drains away from the building. So I got a little bit of an incline here, so you gotta push it back into it a little bit more than when you come downhill. Whew. Okay. So now you can see that the level is getting pretty high. So I'm gonna drain this down right here. I'm gonna fill some barrels. Uh, or fill part of a barrel, and then we're gonna fire her up. Okay. I'm gonna let you watch this whole press cycle. Over here, I'll show you the controls. You saw how easy this is. So there's just one program. So what you do is you'll go to automatic, and there's three programs. I'm going F1, and there's program number one. That's it. That's how the thing comes. Comes stock like that. And then when you're ready to go. Hit start. And then this thing, it's all pressure sensitive and all programmed, ready to go. So as that ram comes down, it'll even everything out. And watch the juice fly out the side. <laughs> Just like to sneak a little taste of this. So that's a cool thing is you can really monitor this press and when you take your cuts at it, it's um, just super accessible. I gotta get over to that pump. I gotta pump some wine. Just see on the control panel. So once this guy goes off, it means it's done. But you can still see, so it's down, it's like pushing, it's like super, it's like pressing super hard. And so it's still extracting some juice from the berries. So I, but this stuff right here is, um, it still tastes great. So I, I let it run for, a little bit to um, to get as much wine as we can. All right, let me fill some barrel here. So watch the casing. Well, I don't know what to call it. Watch the like this part up here. Like right now, it's pushing down so hard. <laughs> it's pushed like up off the ground. Okay, so we'll lift that up a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna lower the hooks down. These hooks are gonna grab the basket and and that'll let us um, pick up the the basket underneath here and, and dump it. Okay, it looks good there. And then over here. Okay, up we go. Stunk. Hear that? That's the cake coming out of there. I'll let you look at this. This is awesome. All right. Now, get this out of the way. Check this out. This is great. So that's the cake that you get. 
I'm in the bottom of this thing. <laughs> he tried to break off a piece, but he was like, fuck, to grab in there and break it off. It was like super compacted. Okay. I'll show you how the forklift grabs this thing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the bucket or the basket and we are going to dump it into one of these bins. Then I'm going to I'll fall off later on. <laughs> this is the part I always get nervous about scratching this new press. It's so shiny. It just comes right up like so. Okay, so now I got you all set up. I'm going to show you how this thing dumps. <laughs> Give it a good rinse, too. I just picked it up off the press here. I got a couple of bins. I don't think you can see them. A couple of bins that I'll dump this into so then I can go drop it off. I use this stuff to keep the dust down. I know the place works great. Wagak just comes out. it back on get ready for the next cycle just kind of finesse it back on there what you do is when you're coming up to the press here you line it up so it just barely touches the perforated basket kind of casing thing that goes in here if you get it close to that then you'll be close to the peg that holds this into place just kind of let it down real nice and easy with the forklift until it finds the hole. There we go. <laughs> it's as easy as that, right? <laughs> Backup cams on cars and trucks. I think I had a fork cam underneath there so I could see where to drop the basket. <laughs> I'm really struggling this thing. There we go. Good gravy. All right. see here how everything looks Ooh, sky cam view a little bit of remnants in there I'm doing the same varietal same vineyard here in the next one so I'm not gonna wash it out but that's how it looks so that's the press cycle of how this thing is um, how this thing runs. So again, it's um, it's about a 20 minute press time from start to finish once you press the start button. But as you can see, it, I was 
dinking around and took me forever to get going. So it was about an hour to, to run one press cycle. But now that I'm set up and got the hoses hooked up, it's gonna go much quicker. Um, the couple of things that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, I love any suggestions on this, is when, this is kind of in cleaning formation right now. I'll have the, the, the uh, ram all the way up and I'll bring the basket all the way down to clean it. And then that way I will be able to, with the pressure washer, I'll be able to get all the way around it from the outside. And that kind of pushes in all of the skins and the, all the seeds that get jammed into these little perforation, perforated holes, perforations, whatever you call them. But they're, um, they'll get jammed in there. So the uh, pressure washer will just kind of like, you know, hit that really good. And then from there, what we'll do is I'll get down, I'll be able to lower it all the way down and I'll be able to look down in between the ram that'll be sitting right here and it'll have about this much room so I can look down in between there and kind of kind of spray out everything else that's in there. For this guy, how I clean this is I leave it hooked up to the forklift and I'll lift it up and put it on its side. So I can just stand there and just rah, just spray it out with the washer there. I use super. I got the um, I got the aqua cart and it's uh, it's heated up to 185 degrees. So I don't use like any chemicals when cleaning this thing. That's one of the greatest things is you can get this thing sparkling with just hot water, and it's uh, so you don't have to screw around with uh, chemicals and scrubbing it. Um, the um, yeah, everything is just so easy to get to and you're not having to climb up in a tank or, or inside of a press or anything like that. Um, yeah, so overall, I love the, like the ease, the speed, the, the, the cleaning is so much easier. The, and the quality of the wine that comes out of this is, it, like it matches our style perfectly for the, the style that we go for, which is like very soft tan and Bordeaux. And so it's not getting that, that super tough press on it. Um, yeah, so I'm Greg Frechette and this is the Carlson and Associate Basket Press. Uh, those guys are headed, they're, um, they're in Napa. I will, I got a link in the description field that will take you to this product page. They pretty much, I have their full crush pad set up. I got their crusher to stemmer. I got their auger. Like I'm a Carlson house. I'm team Carlson all the way. Carlson and Associates, they're great. Um, but other than that, thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments box below. Smash the subscribe button and hit the like button. <laughs>